Myself on. Good morning. How are ya? Awesome. Well, so I'm barefooted because my shoe just broke. <laughs> but you know what? I can be grounded when I don't have any shoes on. <laughs> Good morning. I'm so glad to see you this morning on this holiday weekend. I know that there are other places you could have chosen to be, and you're choosing to be here with us, and that is awesome. So welcome also to those of you that are joining us online. We are very happy that you're with us as well, and I'm going to invite you to um, use the chat and talk with one another and let me know that you're with us. So with that being said, I think we can start by, oh, because I need to let you know who I am. I'm Rev. Pat Bessie, for those of you that may not know. <laughs> so let us start by uh, singing together, and you may stand or sit, whatever ch floats your boat this morning. Please be seated, and I invite you to join me in prayer. This is a house built on love, and you are the love that builds this house. Without you, this would be just an empty building, but you bring the love into it. I was just sharing with somebody that we've been in this building since 1991. So there's a lot of love that are in these walls and in this building. And it's because of people like you that have been here through all those years building up that love. So on this holiday weekend, we remember those who gave their life so that we can be here, that we can be here and we can be sharing our spiritual journey in whatever way we feel called. So we thank all who have served or who are serving right now. 
we set aside this weekend to honor them. And this weekend also is like the kickoff to summer. And what a beautiful kickoff it is this morning. So we just give thanks for each and every one of you that are here, for each and every one of you that are joining us online, and for those who have been part of this community over the many, many years. We are so grateful. And for that and so much more, we say thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is, and we let it be. Amen. Amen. Yes. And for those of you that are joining us online and are not here to see what a beautiful day it is. It is absolutely gorgeous out right now um, in the low 70s, very low humidity, just beautiful. So we're, we're blessed. We're blessed. I also want to make mention, I forgot to last week, do you notice our beautiful tree? And that is compliments of Callie. <laughs> She has taken it on to keep that tree in decorations, and I am so grateful. <laughs> uh, so let me see. Is there anything else that I want to share with you this morning? Um, lots of things to share, lots of things happening. Uh, you will find out on the table, the brochure is out for our women's retreat coming up in October. It's the first weekend in October, and we are very excited um, to be offering another retreat uh, with Deb Engel, and she's bringing along with her this time her friend and um, colleague Doreen Wiggins. And Doreen is from Rhode Island, and she is a um, breast cancer surgeon. And so the two of them are going to be doing our retreat this um, fall, and we're very excited about that. So pick up a brochure, um, set the time on your calendar, and invite a friend. And so now, let's see, I uh, guess we can do our invocation. So if you, again, stand or sit, whatever you're comfortable with, and let's do it. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. One presence, one power operating in our life. And our vision statement is, centered in divine love, we celebrate a spiritually transformed world. And our mission statement is, Unity Center for Spiritual Growth reaches in to reach out through education, service, and creation of community. And we have core values that we live by, and they are, we are loving, we are accepting, we are authentic, we are transformative, we are soul-centric, we are compassionate, and we are welcoming. And that is the truth about us. And so now we'll turn it over to our music people. The congregational song this week is a Daniel Maymod song, More Than Enough. There is more than enough in the universe
Thank you, and please be seated. And this is a time that we welcome everyone, uh, whether you're joining us here in person or online. If you're joining us online, we would love it if you would put your name in the chat and let us know where you're coming to us from. And is there anybody here for the first time? Yes, yes. Did you get a welcome packet? Doreen, I mean, um, uh, Julie, did you get a welcome packet when you came in? Yes, okay. Well, we are really, and you're going to hear from her later. Um, so, yes, we're really excited that you're with us today. And so now, oh, yes. Yeah, and, and who is that, Laurie? Your grandson, yes. Welcome. <laughs> Very happy to have him with us today, too, with his grandmother. Wow. I don't ever remember going anywhere with my grandmother before. Ooh, that has to be special. All right. So as we greet one another, we do that by singing through Namaste once, and on the second time through, we greet one another with a bow, a smile, a wave, whatever, a s whatever. You know, I tell you, my kitty cat, we do this. <laughs> He's taken, how many have cats in the house? Okay, he's taken to a new place to, to sleep. I, how's that? I mean, I, I, I just, it's just crazy. Anyway, let us stand as we sing together Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Now, this is a part of the service that I share every week. <clears throat> and I share this because it's really important that you realize that you have spiritual tools that are always at your disposal. And <clears throat> I, I have this vision in my head that I carry around this, this spiritual toolbox. And in this toolbox are these tools. And the first one is that God is good and everywhere present. There is nowhere that you are going to be that God is not. Because there is not a God out here. We're talking about the spirit that lives within us. The second one is that everybody is inherently good. Everybody has that same spark of divinity in them that was in Jesus, that was in Muhammad, that was in all of the great masters. We all have it. And so that, I have to remember that for others as well as remembering it for myself. That I, that I give myself a pass sometimes when I do something that might not be of my highest good. But I give myself a pass because I remember, oh, yes, but I'm whole and complete. I am, I am utterly good. The third one is that our thoughts are creative. And as we think them, so they show up. 
And this is thoughts that we impress with our feelings and hold over periods of time. It's not that random one that goes through, you know, the, the ones that just are like logs floating down a river and they just keep going on by. It's the ones we grab onto and we hold and we keep thinking about. So the ones that you're grabbing onto, make sure they're the ones that you want to hold onto and that you want to see in your life. And then the fourth one is prayer and meditation. And all of this, all of these first three come under that because prayer and meditation is our conscious contact with God. It is our way of connecting in. And then, of course, the fifth one is putting them into action. They have of no value to you if you're not using them. So is there someone that wants to share how they've used these this week? Is there something that you have seen? Yes, Nancy, come on down. Good morning. So the other day, my son was driving his big tractor trailer with a rented bucket loader on the back, and he's about four miles from my house, and he calls and says, Ma, I got a flat tire on the trailer, and there's no spare. What am I going to do? And I said, okay, take, take the tire off, and I'll come pick it up and go down to the local tire place and get a tire. And then I'm thinking... Okay, this is 10.30 in the morning. I got a plumber coming at 12. I, I can do this. I can get, get this done and I can get back. And then I'm starting to, to worry and I'm starting to think this isn't going to work. And that I get the tire and on the way to the tire store I go, everything is going to work out just fine. Everything is going to work in its time. I got there, explained myself. The lady pushed the paper aside, got his tire, went out back, fixed. I was out of there in 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes. And it's like, and everything else, that whole day, everything just continued to go smoothly. It was awesome. Thank you. Why do I worry? Why do I doubt? <laughs> exactly. Christine. Well, I've had a wild four weeks. Some of you know that my daughter's partner passed away. Right up here? Is that better? Okay. So I had to go down Thursday for the viewing for Thursday night. And a few weeks before when I was at our house, my front bumper had caught on her fence, so it got loosened up a little bit. Well, what I didn't know is it was getting looser and looser. And going over the Topin Bridge in Boston, I hit a cone, and it loosened it even more. I didn't know if I realized this at all. And I get to the, my exit on 93 in Boston, exit 15 that takes you to Mass Ave and everything, takers, and comes off, goes under my car, the car behind me runs over it, the truck behind that car stopped, and I had stopped too, I had pulled over and stopped, the car went by me, the truck had put his blinkers on, I sort of backed up a bit because my license plate was on that bumper, <laughs> <laughs> and so I backed up, that man got out of his truck, ran out, got my bumper, ran up to my car, big grin on his face and said, I think you lost something. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, thank you so much. He says, let's put it in your car. We got it in my car and we left. It was like somebody was watching over me <laughs> that day and I was able to get to my daughter's and it can get fixed. It can get, it get a new one, but no one was hurt, no accident or anything. It just was. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Another, why do I worry? Why do I doubt? Everything's going to work out all right. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Those are awesome stories, and it's a reminder 
it's a reminder that there is a power greater than ourselves at work in our life if we hold that knowing. If we remember that and just say, hmm, everything's going to work out. I'm not going to, I'm going to be able to do this, this, and this. And it does. It does in so many miraculous ways. All right. So uh, we're shifting gears now, and we're going to move into our daily word. And our daily word reader today is Jim Stabler, who is also one of our greeters and a board member. Come on down. Look at that shirt. Woo! Good morning. Sunday, May 26th, comfort. I am comforted by the embrace of divine love. When someone dear to me trances, I may feel fearful and alone. I do not hide my feelings or seek to numb them, even if I am tempted. Grief has come to pass. It cannot pass until I acknowledge and feel it. Opening to all my heart, all my heart is holding. I feel a presence far stronger than pain. Even in deepest grief, divine love is strong within me, lifting me, making my feelings bearable. As I feel comforted by this love, I become increasingly aware of the peace and strength in my heart. Even in my grief, I am grateful to trust the healing comfort of divine love. It blesses me today and will be an ongoing presence as I need it. My love for those I lost is eternal and unchanging, just like God's love for me. Matthew 5, 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Thank you, Jim. To open up Pat's talk this morning, the music team is going to sing, Do All You Can. Please feel free to join in on the refrains.
I say this so often, but it is so true. Dina picks the most amazing music to go with where I'm going. Uh, it just blows my mind. Yes. <laughs> so where we're going this morning is on a trip to Senegal, which is a small coastal town uh, or country on the southwest, farthest west tip of Africa. Anybody been there? I haven't, but I don't know if anybody else did. Anyway, in slave days, it was a prosperous French colony. And today, you can visit the historic slave owners' castles with prison-like dungeons. I guess people go there. I don't know why. But <clears throat> and now, it's um, pretty much a tourist attraction. There are monuments to past human and economic savagery. Just, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> but today, we're going to go to the Sahel Desert, which covers much of Senegal. <clears throat> and it expands each year towards the sea. <clears throat> Excuse me. It has a harsh environment not friendly to life. The sand is very fine and dusty, and it has a shade of pale orange. And everything near the edge of the desert, the streets, the houses, the plants, the roads, even the people, are covered with this yellowy-orange sand. It's that fine, and it's everywhere. A few weeks ago when we started this series, which is The Soul of Money by Lynn Twist, I talked about her and her husband having um, lived a very, very prosperous life. But they found that they were economic hamsters on a wheel of acquiring more and more and more. Her husband was working for um, a startup company during the late 90s when everything was flourishing and, and um, tech stuff was going on and they were, he was making lots of money, but <clears throat> it also took all of his life and all of her life. And she finally came to the realization that this was not the way that they wanted to live. And until then, she hadn't woken up to her calling, and her calling was deep within her soul. And her calling, if some of you were here earlier when I started this series, was to eliminate world hunger. Uh, that's a big calling, to eliminate world hunger. So our story today is in Senegal and in the desert. And Lynn was there with 17 other Hunger Project contributors. They were there to meet with individuals several hours into the desert. <clears throat> they were there to help them find a new source of water or a new place to live because the, the tribes in the desert were running out of water and their time was very limited. So today, we're focusing on the fourth chapter, which is sufficiency, the surprising truth. So as they drove in further into the desert, everyone became covered with that orangey, silty sand. They got it in their lungs, <clears throat> but they continued to drive on the rough roads into this orange wind. They saw fewer and fewer people plants or animal life. Am I having a problem? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Why should I worry? Why should I doubt? <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so as they were driving in, they saw fewer and fewer people, fewer and fewer plants or animal life. It was barren and every direction. 
And the thought was, how can anyone exist and live in this environment? The driver with their, there were several drivers because there were 17 of them going in, with their compasses began to drive out into the open desert. And at one point, the drivers stopped. They could hear the sound of drums. So they began to drive in the direction of the drums. And as they approached, they could see moving specks. But at first, they thought they were animals. However, when they got nearer and nearer, they saw dozens of children running toward their vehicles, bursting with excitement. In one of the most barren spots on earth, there were children full of excitement and vitality. Just picture that. As more children streamed towards them, Lynn and her companions found their eyes welling up with tears. And then in the distance were two large bobob trees. And I'm not saying, is that, am I saying that correctly? What is Baobab? Baobab trees. And there were about 120 people gathered in the shade. The Baobab tree can grow with almost no water and it provides shade and windbreak for desert dwellers. Miracle as it were, was that out of nothing appeared an incredible scene of men, women, and children dancing, drumming, clapping, and shouting greeting, greetings of welcome. Just picture that. Picture what you would have felt like coming upon that scene. I'm quoting Lynn now. She says, they seemed to know that I was the leader and they pulled me into the center of the circle where the women danced around me and with me. I was swept up in the moment, moving my body in concert with theirs. They cheered and clapped. My fellow travelers joined me and we danced and clapped and laughed together. Time and space seemed to suspend. It wasn't hot or dry anymore. It wasn't sandy or windy. All that disappeared and we were enveloped in celebration. We were one. Then the drums stopped. People sat down. Time for the meeting to begin. The chief explained through a translator that their village several kilometers away was worth running out of water and that they welcomed our partnership. He went on to say that they were strong, able people and that the desert was their spiritual home. They and 16 other villages to the east were at a point where scarce water resources was pushing them to the edge of their options. They couldn't continue without a change in the water situation. Now these people were Muslim. And so in the circle, the men did all the talking. Women were in a second circle where they could see and hear, but they did not speak. Lynn sensed the women would have the solution. So she asked if she could meet with just the women. The mullahs and the chiefs allowed it, which was a big thing for them to be able to do that. We now have a group of the tribal women and the women from Lynn's group. And the only man in that group was the translator. And the women spoke. Clear to them, there was an underground lake beneath the area that they were on. They could feel it. They knew it was there. They had seen it in their visions, but they needed permission from the men to dig a well deep enough to reach the water. The men had not allowed the women to do this in the past because they didn't believe there was water. They didn't want the women to do that kind of work. 
And for women, weaving and farming were allowed, but planning and digging a well was not. The women knew what they knew. All they needed was permission from the men. Lynn writes, there was a hush of collective energy and commitment. I looked around me. It was baking hot. There were thousands of flies. I had silt in my mouth and lungs. It was about an, as uncomfortable a place as you can imagine being in. And yet, and yet, I remember that I did not feel any thirst or discomfort. Only the presence of possibility amidst these bold and beautiful women. Instead of finding people who were hopeless, starving, sick, and poor, Lynn found people who needed food and water, but they were not poor. They were not resigned. They were well, a well of strength, a wealth of perseverance and ingenuity. They burned with the fire of possibility. They burned with the fire of possibility. Think about a time when you were burning with a power and the fire of possibility. Might not have been recently, or it may be right now, that something in you is causing you to burn with possibility. Many conversations ensued among the group and with the men. <clears throat> Agreement was made with the mullahs and the chief that the women would start the work because the women had the vision. Over the next year, the women dug. With hand tools and simple equipment, we brought them. This is Lynn telling the story. They dug deeper and deeper, singing, drumming, and caring for each other's children as they worked, never doubting never doubting the water was there. They were certain that if they dug deep enough, the water would be there, and it was. They reached the underground lake. And so how does the story end? Well, it's not ended, but what happened next was that the men and women built a pumping station and a water tower for storage the 17 villages now had water. The whole region transformed. Now we see irrigation, chicken farming, literacy classes, businesses. Women are now a respected part of the community in a new way. The land they lived on proved to be the key to their own prosperity. How many times have we doubted that something would be possible only to find out that it was possible and it turned everything around. And that's exactly what this story did. This story, the women had a vision and the men were wise enough. And this was hard for these men because that was not part of their custom. You have to remember that. It was very hard for them to say, go ahead and have this meeting with these women and let these women do this. But it saved their lives. It saved the lives of 17 villages. So throughout this whole series, we've been talking about the three to toxic myths. And Unity calls these our Arab beliefs. One is there's not enough. There's not enough. If, if there's not enough, then I better get mine, which goes to number two, which is more is better. So if, I, if there's not enough and I may need to make sure that I'm going to have my own and what I need, I better make sure I have a lot of it. And then the third one is, well, you know, it's just the way it is. Now, that could have been how these people in this desert lived. There's not enough water, so we better gather what we can while we can, because it's going to run out. And you know what? It's just the way it is. It's our misfortune. But that is not 
what happened. And that is not what we have to live with either. So how do we turn those around? We have three truths. First, money is like water. It carries the flow of our intentions. The money is just a piece of paper. We give value to it. So depending on how we hold the idea of, of the intention is how we hold money. The second one is what you appreciate, appreciates. Don't we believe that? The more that I give thanks for something, the more I have to give thanks for. The more that I hold and do my gratitude list every morning, the more things I find to be grateful for. What I appreciate, appreciates. And the third one is collaboration creates prosperity. Collaboration creates cl prosperity. When we are collaborating with each other, we're bringing everybody higher. Last Saturday was a, a, was a great example of that when we did the cleanup. There was a collaboration of people that were doing things that made everything work, where if it was just one person, a very small portion of what got done would have gotten done. And why do we collaborate? Because everybody has an idea, just like those women. Those women had a vision. I may have one piece of the puzzle, but somebody else has it. Barbara might have the next piece, or Sue might have the next piece. So the more that we collaborate, the more that we expand what it is that we're trying to accomplish. I have a few quotes I want to share with you. One comes from Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of Science of Mind. He says, I always have an abundance of money, an abundance of whatever it takes to make life happy and opulent. There is a continuous movement toward me of supply, of money, of all that I need to express the fullest life, happiness, and action. That's a mindset. That is a mindset that I always have an abundance of whatever it is. And if I have that for my mindset, then that's part of what appreciates, appreciates. The second one is Charles Fillmore, his definition of prosperity. Prosperity is not in the possession of things. It is in the knowledge of free and open access to an inexhaustible storehouse of good. Let me say that one again, because that is so important. Prosperity is not in the possession of things. It is in the knowledge of free and open access to an inexhaustible storehouse of good. I have an affirmation for us to say. I'm going to ask Christine to put it up. And we've said it before, but it's such a good one. So let us say it again together. The inexhaustible resource of spirit is equal to every demand. There is no reality in lack. Abundance is here and now manifest. Emblazon that on your brain. Think of it on a regular basis. The inexhaustible resource of spirit is equal to every demand. There is no reality in lack. Abundance is here and now made manifest. And the tribe demonstrated how they indeed have free and open access to an inexhaustible storehouse of good. That story is such an example of that. And when they were without the water that they wanted, did they go into despair? No. They went into celebration. They came together, and they supported each other, believing, why should I worry? Why should I doubt? Everything is going to work itself out. And they held that. 
And so I want to share from uh, <clears throat> uh, scripture from Matthew 6, and many of you know this one, but it's really important. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into bonds, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And you not of more va and are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying a single hour, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. <coughs> <clears throat> and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God in his righteousness, and these things will be given to you as well. And that is so, so true. So as we seek to deepen our understanding of the relationship between our soul and money, let us meditate on the insights from this chapter. In this chapter, we are, invite, we are invited to explore the concept of money like water that can flow, cleanse, and refresh our lives. It can be a conduit for commitment, a currency of love, and a means for expressing our deepest intentions. So let us prepare for meditation. When I'm quiet in prayer, I open my heart. I open my heart. When So I'm going to invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that. And take in a deep breath. And now using your power of imagination, envision money as a clear flowing stream. It moves with purpose, directed by the values and intentions that you set. With each breath, feel the flow of abundance around you, recognizing that what you appreciate, appreciates. So now, imagine your financial resources as water, nourishing the seeds of your highest commitments. Nourishing the seeds of your highest commitments. See them grow and flourish. Fed by the stream of your conscious choices.
Reflect on the idea that collaboration creates prosperity. Visualize yourself joining hands with others, creating a network of streams that merge into a powerful river. Moving towards a shared vision of sufficiency and abundance. And as you breathe out, release any beliefs of scarcity. Breathe in the truth that there is enough. Breathe in the truth that there is enough. And more importantly, you are enough. Now let this feeling of sufficiency fill you up and spill over. Let it touch every aspect of your life. Let this feeling of sufficiency just permeate every part of your being. And when you're ready, open your eyes, carrying with you the serenity and abundance from this meditation, letting your soul inform your money and your money express your soul. Letting your soul inform your money and then your money expressing your soul. And so it is. Amen. And for those of you that are online, I hope you stretch as well. Oh, we have three very important people in this room that I want you to hear from in just a moment. But I need to tell you a couple of things first. Our prayer partner today is Barbara Kowalska, and she would be very happy to pray with you today. She'll be right over here, and if you have something that you would like to um, have prayer with, she's, she's your girl. Course in Miracles. Matt will be holding that in the, in the children's room down the hall. And our new book group starting on Tuesday morning will begin on June 4th. The book that we are going to be doing now is The Five Invitations, 
which is an amazing book. If you're if you have time and can join us, it is online from 10:30 to noon on Tuesdays. And what a great discussion that we have as we are going through the book. So now I want to bring up first I want to bring up Paul Douglas who's going to be sharing with us Awakening the Heart. Come on down, my friend. Yes. Welcome. Thank you so much, Reverend Pat. I'd like to invite you all to join me on Wednesdays for the next four weeks as we explore an introduction to awakening the heart. Reverend Pratt was talking about these tools, these spiritual tools, and, and certainly one of the unity principles is that we live the principles. And I find f for me and, f and for many of my friends, having more tools is a good thing. <laughs> so these are tools of the heart. These are tools that allow you to be more centered. These are tools that allow you to awaken to that light and love within you. And I've been teaching these for almost a decade and find people experience much more joy, much more inner freedom, and much more happiness. And I'd really love to share that with you. So if you have the time, coming up uh, Wednesdays, uh, 6.30 to 8. I'd love it if you could join me. Thank you. Thank you. And that is going to be in person. We haven't had an in-person class for a very long time, so it's going to be in person, which also helps get to know other people. So our registration is online. Go to our website and you can register for this. And I'll see you there on Wednesday night at 6.30. The next person I'd like to bring up is Jacqueline Ashla. And Jacqueline and her good friend Jennifer will be doing a mini retreat on Saturday, June 1st. Good morning, everyone. Um, Jennifer, who is Betty Lou's partner, if you know Betty Lou, and we are putting together an introductory uh, retreat, healing retreat that we've learned through our mystical organization of Sufism, the Anayatea. And it, this is just introductory, so we are doing a very simple course. Sometimes simple is more profound which is part of the way of this particular type of retreat is giving space to yourself and not overwhelming yourself. And this coming Saturday, we're gonna do it on the five domains of your body, which is you know your physical, your mental, your emotional, your relationships with each other, and your spiritual. And so I would love to have you join us. It is for you to decide with your heart on Saturday on what you care to donate to the church because it's going to be all for the church and we just want to share that with you and also it will be our first public <laughs> way of doing this so we'd love to have you so ja <coughs> Jacqueline do they need to bring lunch with them we will be sending out an email to anybody that has signed up that will tell you what we would like you to bring. And yes, please bring your lunch because it will be a silent retreat. So you'll have time to eat it at your leisure while you're thinking about other things. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so that too, you can register online for that. Uh, and now lastly, but not leastly, I want to introduce Julie Sargent. Julie, come on down. I've just, Julie's my new friend. <coughs> I've, just, I've just recently met Julie. Julie um, is one of the facilitators that will be doing the zero balancing. And I had the privilege of having a session with her. And oh my word, it was amazing. So tell us about zero balancing, Julie. I'd love to, yes. Hi everyone, it's lovely to see you and be here. And really the themes are all about body, mind, spirit. And that's right what zero balancing is about. And it's accessing the bone and that deep part of us through touch. And I'm a licensed massage therapist and 
Dr. Fritz Smith has brought this modality to the world, and it's about lighting up our bones, and it's about connecting, and it's a safe way to relax and really let go of stress. It's so beautiful. And I don't want to say anything else about it, but I want you to experience it just for a moment. And one of his tenets is about having a deep sense of inner peace. So I'd just like you to put your feet on the floor. Again, just a revisit to meditation. Parallel lines of breath energy. Allowing the breath to move through your body from base to crown and crown to base. If there's any sticky place, just allowing that to release. If there's any density, maybe it has information and maybe you can let it go. But as you connect into that deeper place, knowing again that everything is just going to be all right. Coming back into the room, thank you. And I hope you'll join us in, a few, in three, two weeks on Sunday, June 9th, 1230 to 330 for some other zero balancing faculty and practitioners. And we're going to delve into zero balancing and feel what it feels like to feel good in our body, mind, and spirit. It's so interesting uh, because uh, Julie was brought to me unknowingly from two different people, from Jacqueline and from Sue Vitna. <coughs> and they didn't know each of the, them were talking to me about Julie. So... <laughs> It's so interesting how the universe works. So all of these events are online, and I do hope that you take advantage of them. Because do we not want to walk through life as fully engaged in, in our life with being fully aligned and healthy? Because to me, that is, that's the key. <coughs> A couple of other things, and then we'll move on. Um, June 14th is our talent show. Uh, Unity's Got Talent. Um, it will be happening here, and I think if you haven't signed up to be part of the talent show and want to, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board. Um, on June 27th, we will have an online event uh, with animal communicator Sylvia Tavares, and that will be a fun event also. Um, she is... Uh, um, she lives up in the Damascata area and is passionate about having uh, you have a communication with your pet. So I can't wait for that. Summer solstice, um, I've been coordinating. You know, we talk about um, collaborating. Well, I've been collaborating with, with Todd and Elizabeth. And we've moved the summer solstice to Friday night the 21st rather than Thursday night the 20th when the solstice is because we want people to um, uh, be able to come and other people may go to other th events on the 20th, so we're going to do it on the 21st. We're just a little outside the box. Um, so that will be at 7 o'clock on the 21st. Uh, just come and enjoy. And then um, one other thing that's going on in July, I'm going to move into July very quickly. We're having a trunk sale. And what the trunk sale is is that you reserve a parking space, you bring whatever you want to sell, and it, you sell it outside your car, or from you, within your car, from your trunk, whatever. <laughs> uh, but you pay for the parking space, and then whatever you sell, you take with you, as well as whatever you have left over, you take with you. <laughs> Hopefully you won't have anything left over. Okay, so speaking of uh, abundance, here is the time that we, uh, and, and you can be very abundant with a trunk sale as well. So um, here is the time that we um, receive our abundance here um, because, because of you, that we keep 
this place going. And so your, your contributions are very, very much needed, and we are grateful. So let us say together our offering statement. Together, divine love flowing through me blesses you. And that is the truth, because as you give, you're giving back to every single person that's here and more to come. And so uh, please come forward, whether you're putting anything in today or not, because you have an affirmation waiting with your name on it. Are you breaking up housekeeping over there, Bill? <laughs> While the offering's being taken, please join us in singing so good. God has been so good to all of us, and so it is. And we bless these tithes and offerings as they go forth to do the will and the work here at Unity Center for Spiritual Growth, and so it is. Amen.
join me as we say together the prayer for protection. Together, we are the light. We are the love. We are the power. We are the presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is swell. Have a blessed week, my friends. Stay for coffee. Have a great weekend. Online.